we're back. And today is the day that I'm going to go through my pack and show everyone what I ended the PCT with. Um, there's a lot of gear changes and I will go more in depth another time on what was changed out, what I kept, what I bounced forward. So yeah, this is everything that was in my pack that I carried with me um, to survive out there for five months. We'll start with what I wore every single day of my life. Started in different shorts, but switched to Lululemon six inch Wonder Train biker shorts. These were with me since Tehachapi and they're great. Um, I have one hole in the butt and the seams are just starting to give out because of wear and tear, but that's, I mean, quite a lot of miles with those. Next up was my sports bra. It's also Lululemon. I forget what it's called. This really smells. I haven't done laundry yet. And same thing, held up really well. I had this since the beginning. It's the seams are, you can see, starting to split there, but I did 1800 miles in this and cannot complain. I literally wore this every single day of my life. Next up is my hiking shirt. I had a Patagonia Cool Daily, I think that's the name of it, shirt in gray. I wore it every single day. You can see where it faded. This thing held up great. Same thing with like my shorts was just wear and tear. I started getting some holes in the armpits and along the sleeves where my backpack would rub against my pack or, or my sleeve would rub against my backpack. That's what I was trying to say. Next up is the sunglasses I wore for most of the trail. In the last couple of weeks, I actually had a different pair and I lost them. It's the only piece of gear that I lost on trail. I was getting changed in a pit toilet when I was doing a road trip and set them down on the toilet paper thing and completely forgot. So these are the sunglasses I wore most of trail, but not the ones I finished in. I also lost my neck strap that I had those on. Next, I didn't, I didn't know where to put this. This is just my pocket knife that I wore on my hip. The shorts that I wore have, a, have pockets, so this was just clipped. A lot of people made fun of me for how big this is. It's a Smith and Wesson. I always want to say Weston. It's Wesson pocket knife, and I actually had to replace this. I lost one along the way. Um, I think it fell out in a hitch, and I liked it. I used it for a lot of different things. You could even split wood with it. It's so sturdy and strong. So jokes on everyone that made fun of me and then used it to cut various things with. Next up is my hat that I wore pretty much every single day. I wasn't wearing my hat. I was wearing my buff, which is somewhere in this pack. <laughs> But L.L. Bean, just five panel hat, loved it. Thing barely faded and would dry a little bit too quick. If I dumped it, dumped it in water in the desert, it would just like dry out immediately, which was good and bad. But I love this hat. I still wear it to this day on hikes, like the hike that I just did. And then lastly, because I don't know where all my socks are. So all of my socks, I know one pair is in this pack, are my shoes. So um, in my last video, you heard me talk about all of my foot pain that I was having along the way. And I eventually switched to Hoka Speed Goats. This was my last pair. These only probably have like, I don't know, less than 100 miles on them now. So these are good to go for a while. These were amazing. I am now a Hoka stan. I love Hokas. I love these. They're great now, even with my plantar fasciitis. Then inside is um, just the insoles I got. They're plantar fasciitis specific, so they're a little bit thicker. And they're just like a no-name brand. Jertosa? Jertosa? I don't know. I got them off Amazon. They were rated very well for people with plantar fasciitis. So just went with those and have had no issues. We'll probably buy some more pairs um, just to put my, my regular shoes. So yeah, that's the shoes. Next up is my fanny pack, the Code Paxi. I don't know what style this is. It's just like a, I think it's like three liter pack. These were so popular on trail. I thought I was gonna be like a hip girl out on, on trail and no one else would have them, but everyone had this like specific fanny pack. It was great. You can wear it crossbody in town. I, so I had like town mode and hiker mode. So it would sit right here all the time. I couldn't do the crossbody thing. This just held my necessities that I needed throughout the day. So typically I would have snacks in here really quick had my headphones. I originally wasn't going to bring these because they're kind of big and bulky, but it's just the Beats, these ones. I don't know. 
I don't know what they're called. I don't know what model they are, but they're Bluetooth headphones. Loved them, used them pretty much every single day. Let's see, I have hand sanitizer, extra roll of film, which some may say is a necessity, some may say it's not. I kept my headlamp actually in my fanny pack at all times, whether I was planning on night hiking or not. That was just kind of something to have right there and it was like easily accessible and I knew where it was at night or and I didn't have to dig through my pack and it was just there at all times. Chapstick, this is one of two, well actually at one point I had four chapsticks on me, that's a story for another day, but, but this is one of two that was easily accessible so always had chapstick on hand. Next thing that people made fun of me for carrying but came in handy a lot of times especially when you have to fill out wilderness permits that your PCT permit like doesn't actually cover, like you actually need to fill one out. Sometimes pens and pencils were not available or if there's a trail register or if you want to send a postcard. I carried a pen the entire time, never lost this bad boy. Don't know how that happened, but always had a pen available, which was great. And then I carried my battery pack. This is the Anchor pack. I don't know, it's really, really heavy. It's the biggest one they make. I wish I spent a little bit extra money and got the Nightcore one, which is like, the same mega, mega amp, mega hertz, mega amp. I don't know. I don't know, but a lot lighter. So wish I had gotten that, but this did the job. Um, never ran out of battery while I was out there. Even on the eight day stretch I did in the Sierra, this thing never died, which was great. Kept everything charged. Let's see what else is in here. Oh, this little case carried some of my extra cords. So I have this one, which for, is for my headlamp. Uh, this one, which I used for charging my Garmin or charging my battery in town. And then I carried cord headphones just in case my other ones died. Um, I definitely didn't need the, like, I didn't need both. I just prefer wireless headphones, but I didn't want to be in a situation that if they died, then I would have no music because you just, there's days where you've thought all of your thoughts and you just need to listen to some music or a podcast or an audiobook. Um, so I want to have those. Let's see. Also have just my iPhone cable. Had to replace this a couple times. Big wear and tear item. Right now I have my National Parks Pass. This was bought for a road trip. It's just in here. I have this Allen wrench on a mini carabiner. That was for um, if I ever needed to take the mount off my camera. I never did need to, but this was just in case, like it got loose, I could tighten it. So I had that. And then extra plastic bag, just in case it rained and I needed to waterproof anything that was uh, electronic that was still in my fanny pack. Let's see, very old Pepto-Bismol that I've been carrying since Agua Dulce, if you know, you know. Let's see, you got some extra quarters, some change, I don't need to show that off. And then my wallet, which has a little carabiner because I modified this pack a little bit, or this fanny pack, and there's this big tag and I just cut it and that allowed me to be able to, let's see if I can do this on camera, to hook my wallet on so that I was never gonna lose this thing. It was great. Um, was great modification. I taught a lot of people how to do that. And then in my wallet, I've taken out all of my cards because I need them because I'm a functioning human being. Uh, it looks like I have a $5 bill left, um, an old receipt, some stamps left over from sending my dad postcards. Uh, let's see. And then I think this is my permit. Oh, there's my earrings. I lost the back of one of my earrings, so I had to take both of them out. And then I have my permits, which were in a plastic bag. I say permits because I had to get a local permit on top of my PCT permits. So let's see which one's which. Here's my local permit. And then this is my PCT permit. So carried those around in a bag to keep them waterproofed. And now I'm finding, oh, and here's my ring that broke. But there's a big old hole in that bag, so not totally waterproof, but those are some relics to add to the archive. Deal with all of that later. So now let's see, we're gonna do a high kick, get my leg around this pack. We'll start with the outside and work our way in. So 
let's see, how do I want to do this? Let's start with the pockets on the outside. So I had on this shoulder a pocket for um, like my cell phone and I ended up not using it for my cell phone after a while because I have one of the big Garmin's, the Garmin Explorer Plus. This is something that my dad very kindly bought me before I ever went out on my through hike. I used it on my day hikes. So I'm used to the big one. Unfortunately, I was carrying it on my hip belt strap and I put my pack down and shattered the screen. So I had to replace this. And in order to not shatter the screen anymore, I started wearing it right here. And it worked out fine, but this was a gear replacement I did not expect to have to do. And then my second chapstick that I always carried uh, right on this strap, just in case I couldn't find it later. In my hip belt pocket, I carried extra film. I started with a lot of this, and but used a lot. Um, I actually have all of the film I used here, um, a lot less than I expected. There's probably about 20 rolls in here that I have to get developed. If you'd like to see these developed in a more timely fashion, feel free to support this channel. There's a link in my bio, or not bio, my, my description, there we go, it's called Buy Me A Coffee. Um, any type of donation helps um, get me back on my feet after um, my through hike, but will also help me develop film because film, even though more popular, is still very expensive to develop. But that's neither here nor there because it was really fun shooting film, so I don't regret any of that. Also in my hip belt, I eventually, let's see, well, I had this charging block, it had four chargers in there, the top one being like a speed charger or whatever, I don't, I don't know what the terms are, but um, that's what I would put my battery pack plugged into. And then the other ones were used for like phone and other things. And then eventually my Peak Designs camera clip was in my hip belt pocket because, I'll get into more detail later, I had to modify the straps of my pack um, eventually for just reasons. Also on the outside of my pack, this is not where I normally carried them because I was using them, but I have my trekking poles. These are the Eastern Mountain Sports Approach trekking poles. I have some Lugo tape and duct tape taped to the outside of them. You can see that the tips are completely gone on these suckers. Um, EMS actually was kind enough to send me new poles. I gave them the wrong address though, so they're semi last mail, I believe. I'm hoping that they're in Mammoth Lakes right now and I just need to call the Mammoth Lakes post office, but shout out to Eastern Mountain Sports. I reached out to them looking to see if they just sold new tips and they were like, hey, we would love to send you new poles. So if you're from New England or live in the New England area, check out Eastern Mountain Sports. They're a great company. They carry so much outdoor equipment, but they also have their own line of equipment and I cannot speak highly enough about those trekking poles. They held up their aluminum. I bent them both on Baden Powell and was able to bend them back. They couldn't even collapse and now they're back to normal. This is my lone water bottle that still exists. I was carrying smart water bottles and then switched to life water. I don't know, they're all the same. I had three of those on me at all times and then lost a bunch. On this side, I usually carry my tent stakes and tent poles. It was just easier. I was carrying them inside my pack when I started carrying my bear can. Um, had to switch that up. Um, actually, I started switching that up even sooner. It was just hard to like shove it down into my pack. Let's see. Got the, can't really see it, but my, my PCT tag was on the outside. Let's see. In my outside mesh pocket, which has seen better days. I should probably mention too, while I'm at it, I carried the Waymark through. I don't know, whatever their 50 liter pack is, unframed. I'll go into more depth and I'm planning on doing a big three review. This pack served me well. There's a few things that I would have liked different about it or would have looked for different packs, but I kind of had to use what I had to use. So Waymark, 50 liter, loved it, held everything I needed. In the outside mesh pocket, I had to carry athlete's foot spray because I had a raging case of athlete's foot at one point. Let's see, my Kula cloth, which broke so I couldn't attach it to the outside of my pack, that caused, the, that caused some smells. But that was a new addition and wish I had started trail with it. 
Next in this pocket, these are my micro spikes. I carry these most the trail. I only bounce them once and I barely even use them, but you know, you gotta safety. Things you get, you carry. Next up is my filtration system in this mesh bag. Uh, this is a Sawyer. I had a full size Sawyer, it didn't work. My friend Sawyer found a Sawyer mini on trail. I took it. I use that all the way to Tehachapi. So everyone that gave me crap for carrying a Sawyer Mini, I was fine, never got sick, never, it never really clogged. It was slow in the end, but um, got this in Tehachapi. I don't think I've back flushed it once and flow rate's still amazing on that. And then um, one change that I made in Tehachapi was I stopped using a filtering bottle and just more reliant on my Canoc. It's actually pronounced Canoc. Everyone says, a lot of people say CNOC. I even said CNOC, um, but then my friend told me that he watched a podcast and the creator behind Canoc was like, no, it's pronounced Canoc. So had this two liter bag. I did spring a small hole in it, but um, it was fine for the most part. And then second last thing was, this is just in a plastic bag, my trowel. Just funny stories about this trowel that I, maybe one day I will tell, but had this and usually had toilet paper and like tampons in this bag, just carried it on the outside of my pack for easy access. And then the last thing I carried in the outside mesh pocket was actually my tent, Big Agnes Tiger Ball UL2, Tiger Ball UL2, I think that's the official name. I don't know, two person tent, semi freestanding, loved it. We'll go into more detail, like I said, in probably my big three video yeah that's everything that was on the outside of my pack when i was carrying it and it's out in my car i forgot to grab it i did have my ice axe strapped to the, the outside so moving on on top of my pack i carried sit pad got this from amazon cheap did its job it is what it is um, my pack is a roll top which i really liked inside i carried my l beam uh, Thermo, not Thermo Rust, wow, Owl Beam Permaloft, like synthetic, uh, puffy, couldn't think of the words, it packs down, it was amazing, I loved this thing, it was so lightweight and super warm, held up really well, I was able to wash it whenever I wanted to because I didn't have to worry about the down because it is synthetic, a few holes did rub into the sleeves, which is not the biggest deal, I think I burned a hole in it too by accident, I mean, stuff happens, but I love this jacket. It was my winter jacket before even going out on trail and kept me nice and warm. Next up is my toiletry bag, which has seen better days. Inside was, let's see, this bag, which was a mix of just medications, hair ties, band-aids, sewing kit, just you name it, it was in this bag. Sunblock. When it was really sunny out, I did carry this in my fanny pack, but I eventually started just carrying it inside my bag. Um, this is just the new Shadrina face stuff. I used it all over my body. It was great. I carried a full-size thing of toothpaste. Saved money there. I did carry a razor. Judge me. Luxury item. My toothbrush, which was just a travel fold-up toothbrush. Let's see. I have a mini hairbrush, which saved my life many a time. Uh, let's see. Oh, this I didn't actually carry bits in there. It's some conditioner. That's from road tripping. Um, I also randomly have two rolls of film in there. Those were carried in there for a while. And then let's see, nail clippers and eye drops for when my eyes got really dry and itchy. Oops. Next up, this was something that was moved inside my pack. I carried this big water waterproof uh, bag for the entire trail. I mostly just carried my, excuse me, film camera in there. This is the Pentax K1000. I carried this with me all of trail. Loved it, it's how I got my, my trail name. And honestly, I did not use it as much because it was in my pack a lot because I had to move it from my shoulder strap because my shoulder was getting was getting irritated by the weight. Plus I had to redo, I had to do some stuff to my shoulder straps and I just couldn't carry it um, on the outside anymore. And it just went unused a lot, which was really sad. Next up, 
rain jacket. Standard black, a little heavier than what I wanted, not as waterproof as I would have liked. Eastern Mountain Sports it is not their fault, it is mine. I bought the, rain, the wrong rain jacket. Then this is my pump sack for my sleeping pad. Carry that, they usually had something in it, but that's just hanging out. Now, this is when things get a little chaotic. This is a shirt that I think is actually inside out. Yeah, whatever. I added this extra thermal. It's merino wool. Added that for the Sierras because I ditched my sweatshirt a long time ago and it was like lost in the mail for a while. Camp socks, L.L. Bean beanie, uh, other sort of thermals, Patagonia one. I forget the name of it. They don't make this one anymore, which is really sad because I put a few holes in it and I've had it since college and it's like my favorite shirt, super warm, super lightweight. Wore that a ton. This is my food bag, which would just kind of float around depending on whether I had room in my bear can or not. It's the pill top. Yeah, pill top packs. Um, thing you know, one, loved it. Uh, it did not look this way in the beginning. That held my food until I started carrying this bad boy which is my bear ball. It's the 550, it's whatever the biggest, I think the biggest one is, with all my stickers that I've collected along the way. Um, maybe I'll do a sticker tour one day. I started carrying this in Washington because little known fact is that you have to carry a bear can or an ursac or do bear hangs in pretty much all of Washington. I can't do a bear hang to save my life and I was not going to spend an extra $150 for an ursac when I had already purchased this. So I started carrying it in Washington. Love hate relationship with that, but trying to follow the rules. I have no idea what's inside of this. Let's see. Looks like I've got some hydration stuff. So some noon tablets and then acclimate, which was like something that was supposed to help us um, acclimate to the higher elevations. Um, I have my <laughs> cook pot which oops not came off in the end which I forgot this was in here not the cook pot itself but um I went to a Taylor Swift concert along the way and apparently put all of my friendship bracelets in there so I didn't carry those on trail they just happened to be there this is the Tokes um 750 milliliter loved it it's a little burnt on the sides because I cooked over the fire once because I was afraid of running out of gas so Oops, that definitely needs to be cleaned. I'll deal with that later. And then here is my BRS mini stove. Loved this thing, it was super lightweight. Not the most fuel efficient, but like it did the job. I normally had a lighter too. This would be like carried inside the pot with my um, propane and then a lighter, my cook setup. I don't have either the fuel or the lighter because I couldn't carry that on the plane. And then remnants of trail, just Idaho potatoes. These are the, the loaded baked potatoes. So there's that. <laughs> Let's see what else is in here. Oh, I have my ground sheet. This was a Six Moons Design Tyvek sheet. No issues with that, loved it. Just folded it up, used it as the back support of my pack. This is my Thermo Rest, what is it? Neo Air X Lite NXT. So I had to replace my Thermo Rest in the desert, got a new one. And then this one, Thermo Rest. I gotta email you guys because about a month in, two months in, whatever it is, started leaking. Um, right around the time I got to Trail Days and took it to the Thermarest tent at Trail Days thinking that there was a hole in it and they were like, no, 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 it's not a hole. It's just a, a leaky valve. Like your valve is dirty, but there's no way to clean your valve. So they semi cleaned it. It was good for the next like day and a half at Trail Days. And then immediately after that, um, it started leaking again and I was blowing this thing up five times a night. So it should still be under warranty. I'm hoping at least, but yeah, I couldn't get it replaced on trail because I just didn't have the time to stay in town and wait for it to be sent to me. So uh, I gotta figure that one out. Next up is my clothing bag. These are darn puffs, um, kind of secondary camp socks, but also used as a second layer when it was really cold. I picked those up somewhere, but they're the PCT ones, so that's really fun. 
Um, these are the socks I wore pretty much every single day. I carried a couple pairs of them, just in Jinji, the running crew socks. Those are my favorite. My gloves, which were okay. Mostly slept in gloves. I didn't really use them throughout the day, but I, I slept in my gloves a lot. These are my wind pants. They're just like thin nylon dance pants. I stole the hack from Jupiter Hikes. He was like, ah, I don't wear rain pants. In retrospect, do I wish I had rain pants? Not really. It would have been better. These weren't like the best wind pants, but they were a good extra layer. Um, I didn't wear them a ton. Uh, next up is a pair of Rab. They're like a mix between synthetic and merino wool. Um, just another base layer, which these were really nice. The only time I really wore these were summiting Mount Whitney because it was really cold and windy that day, but it was good to have on me in the Sierra. Next up are my leggings that I carry the entire time. Sometimes I'd hike in them, mostly slept in them. They smelled really bad. I really need to wash those. And then let's see. I have my compression sock that I had been carrying since the desert. I did have two of these, only kept one on me. I only have one pair of underwear because I'm not gonna show my dirty underwear online, but those are just a pair of synthetic uh, Victoria's Secret like bikini bottoms. They were not like actual bikini, but like style bikini. They were great and comfortable and no issues with them. And then lastly in my clothing bag, but I normally wore this around my neck every single day is my buff. It's I didn't cut it, it came like this. You can buy a half length and it was great um, for sweat, for headbands, for all sorts of things. Clean my glasses, I blew my nose in it a lot, which was kind of gross, but it is what it is. Uh, let's see, down here is my Sea Summit pillow. This is another luxury item. This used to be a lot less dirty, but used pillow the entire time and that was great and very helpful for getting good night's sleep. Uh, let's see. Second to last, actually, because there's something else on the very, very bottom, but this is my quilt. You can tell I have a favorite color. Um, it is green. And loved this quilt. It was a 10 degree quilt from UGQ, uh, 800 fill down. Loved it. The only thing, and I'll go probably more into detail, is that it shed a lot, which I didn't completely love, but it was very warm. And then finally on the bottom of my pack is just a Nylofilm bag. I use this as a pack liner. I mostly only used it on days that I knew it was likely to rain or if I was doing a kind of like sketchy stream crossing that I felt like if I fell in, it would be really bad. I had maybe probably because I didn't use it every single day, no issues with holes. Other people had to replace it quite frequently, but Someone gave this to me on trail. I didn't actually purchase it. These can be kind of expensive, but you can get cheaper alternatives by just using like a contract, a trash compactor or contractor. One of those big black trash bags. So there's that. And then finally, a better look at pack, which has some wear and tear, some holes that I need to patch, some holes that I did patch. And it had two side pockets. Here's the chest strap pocket, hip belt, and then as you'll see, there's duct tape and some switchback tape to it because I felt like the straps were not cushioned enough for me. To add a little bit of cushion, I took someone's extra switchback piece and taped it, and once I did that, that was amazing. The pack held up great. There's some holes on the pockets, but like nothing major. The hip belt was cinched pretty much all of the way. If I had lost any more weight, we would have been in a much different situation. I was still able to cinch it to the point where the weight was mostly off my shoulders. But yeah, that's everything that I had at the end of trail. It's still a lot, it feels, but it's like, I look around my apartment and I have so much stuff in comparison. So I'm um, crazy to think that everything I needed fit in this pack and that I was maybe able to work make it work. I guess some last stats are, I believe my base weight when I started was around 17 or 18 pounds, which is a little bit more than I think what this pack could have handled. A lot of that was due to the camera equipment I was carrying. I did have an extra, cam a different camera with me, a uh, digital camera, but I, I got rid of that very quickly. Uh, but having my film camera, I thought is not something that's light and I was always carrying around a bunch of extra film. So that was kind of my luxury, big luxury item, but I am not 
ultra light by any means. I try to be, but um, yeah, that's kind of everything. Um, thanks again for watching and I will catch you in the next one. I don't know what the next one will be. If there is something that you want to hear about, more about, feel free to drop me a comment or reach out to me on Instagram or whatever it may be. I may do like a and a so feel free to ask any questions down below. Like I said, I'll probably do a big three video or go through like, this is what I started with, this is what I ended with. The biggest thing that I can think of is my shoes. I'm still going through some pros and cons of all of the models of shoes that I wore, uh, stuff like that. So uh, just thanks for being here and I'll see you in the next one.